But guys, here we are today doing a pretty interesting experiment and we are doing it on my personal build. Now, I'm still running an RTX 3090 because I think with how the prices are on the new RTX 5000 and even used RTX 4000 at the moment for that, it's not time for me to upgrade yet, especially since I still have a 100 Hz 3440x1440p monitor. However, I run my card undervolted and even undervolted it still gets pretty high in temperature and it is just slightly starting to be loud and i have never repasted it yet but the card ran very little around six months of usage but it's still a card with around three years of age so today we are trying to see if we can improve the temperature even more by putting something else rather than thermal paste in it and uh, no i'm not talking about liquid metal what we have here today is stuff from a greek company because yes i actually found out who makes all of this because those things started to pop up on reddit and people were buying them on aliexpress and you can buy them on aliexpress but uh, there are also quite a bit of fakes so i just found the original store and basically we have the up siren i don't know how it's pronounced up siren or up siren ux pro ultra and this is a thermal pad replacement but this is not the star of today's show even though this is also very important we have honeywell ptm 7950 phase change thermal pads which are supposed to become dramatically better than thermal paste after a few heat cycle and more importantly to have a lot longer lifespan compared to thermal paste so the idea is we take off the stock paste we put honeywell ptm 7950 and we take off the original thermal pads and we put up siren ux pro ultra there now up siren also makes the u6 pro which is a lot cheaper so for 20 grams you're gonna pay around 20 bucks for the u6 pro and uh, really that's more than enough for a single card or you can pay around 40 bucks for the ux pro ultra so the ux pro ultra is a lot more expensive compared to this however this is made more for laptops and this is more for high performance desktops now this is still going to be a thermal pad replacement and it's going to work better than thermal pads but this is supposed to be a lot better than thermal pads so that's why i'm very interesting so the idea today is that with around 30 bucks because if you buy the smaller version of this you're going to pay around 20 and then around 10 bucks for the Honeywell. Now I bought two just because I fear it may damage one. So I want to be able to have a replacement and they're very cheap. On AliExpress they're around three bucks each. So again, very cheap. And by the way, I will try to put the links to the original website down below. But if you're not in Europe, it's probably better if you buy from AliExpress. But uh, again, uh, where you buy this stuff is going to be up to you. But uh, the point is, we're going to try to put this in my RTX 3090. And I just took the baseline and I will show you guys the baseline, etc. after we actually repasted everything now one last interesting thing is as you can see right here on my side i have the new arctic liquid filter 3 white because in my daily system i'm running a deep cool cooler when i built it arctic wasn't out with the new coolers yet but i'm running full arctic fans in there because if not it was super loud and just not very good arctic just made a screwdriver a ratchet screwdriver and a precision screwdriver and i want to try those out so what better way than while dismounting my personal gpu i feel which is also very tricky to dismount that i chill x4 card so let's get started And here we are after testing. Now I am extremely impressed by both the face change thermal pad and by the spreadable thermal pads. So first of all, let's discuss the actual results. Now, what I will show you right now is the stock Firestrike results with the stock 
temperature and fan speed percentage. Very important to actually interpret those results. Then I will show you guys the after stock results. So as you can see in both, MSI Afterburner is at stock and we are running stock curve, stock clock speed. And as you can see, the temperature reduction is quite drastic, around seven degrees on the hotspot and in the same range for the actual core. Now, I'll show you guys the temperature result for undervolted before, so the five strike with the undervolt, which is how I was actually running my system before, versus the undervolt after, which is how I'm running my system now and here the difference is smaller but it's still there both in temperature and also in fan speed which is very important again in the actual stock result we even gained some performance of course we did not in the undervolted because if you're undervolting you are locking your car to a certain frequency so the frequency is not oscillating and it's gonna stay there regardless now the main data which you have to interpret though is the fan speed because if we take a look at the both the stock after and the undervolt after the repaste, they both have around a 20 to 30% lower fan speed. Now, that means the card is a lot quieter. And now in the case of the undervolt, it just means that the card is running slower and you get no gains except for a little bit more quiet in the card. But in the stock results, this means that the card can actually boost for longer and that if we normalize our fan speeds, which I've also done, temperature delta is gonna be bigger. So the actual temperature delta on the hotspot is actually of 14 degrees and on the CPU core around 12 degrees, which is a massive improvement for something that literally took me around one hour to do. Now, with that said, temperature is definitely worth it. And this is better than thermal paste, okay? I'm gonna tell you off the bat because while opening up the card, thermal paste condition, was bad but not actually so bad because again the card is old but it didn't run as much as you can see it's also pretty clean on the inside and the same goes for the pads they are dry a bit but they are not so overused now expense wise i would also say it's worth it because if you think about it you're spending around 30 bucks to do the whole card and uh, if you're doing this on a 500 dollar card at least it's definitely worth it i wouldn't do this on a very cheap card because if you're paying 100 bucks for the card and then paying 30 bucks to do all this, it's maybe not worth it. If the card is very cheap, I would recommend doing just a repaste or using cheap thermal pads, but you have to be careful there because it may overheat. But if the card is cheap, you probably don't have hot running VRAM, which means you can get away with not repadding, which is very important. But the last question is gonna be skill level required and difficulty of this. And uh, I'm gonna tell you it's the opposite of what it looks like on camera, which means on camera, I think it's gonna probably look like putting a thermal pads was, was very simple. Like I just uh, slapped the pads there randomly with my fingers and that uh, applying the actual PTM 7950 on the GPU die was difficult, but it's the opposite. So. The PTM was actually easy, but you should not apply it on your GPU. You should apply it on your heatsink. I wanted to put it there because first of all, I didn't read the instructions, but I knew it was gonna go on the heatsink, but I decided to put it there because I wanted to see if the surface is uneven and if you don't mount it perfect, if it's still gonna run properly, which is why I had a second one, but it runs so well, I didn't have to change it. So it means even though it is very sensitive to tolerances, uh, it still have a bit of tolerance built in so you can actually do not a perfect job and still run it fine which is very important uh, again if you have to just be perfect with something it's probably not worth buying unless you're an expert or unless you buy three or four so that's key but the thermal pads are actually pretty tricky to apply because they're very hard to catch with the little thing they give you so you have to use gloves or again the single finger gloves they give you and you have to literally grab them with two fingers and then spread them and uh, now you're probably wondering how thick do you have to make them and you just need to make them a bit more thick than the actual thermal pad and then to allow the pressure of the heatsink to spread them out by itself but you cannot compress them too much because if you actually put them there and then compress them, like you would if you were a construction worker, then they're gonna be harder to compress and the heatsink is not gonna work. That's the most common mistake. And uh, yes, if you put too much, they're gonna go everywhere and they may actually uh, transfer the heat to the wrong place and actually damage your card. So the thermal pads, spreadable, they are not easy to apply, but if you're willing to put in the time, they are doable, I think, for someone who is able to dismount the GPU. If it's your first repaste, I wouldn't get the spreadable thermal pads, like, honestly. I think you can still get 
the PTM 7950, even if it is your first time doing this. Objectively, thermal paste and traditional pads are a lot easier overall. So I would say on a difficult scale from one to 10, this is a solid seven in difficulty, but the performance gain is worth it 100%. Also, a big benefit of this is theoretically you can run this for a lot more years than normal thermal paste. So thermal paste every one or two years you have to replace depending on how much you use it. This can run probably three or four and the same goes for spreadable thermal pads. With that said, as usual here at the Motin PSUs, what I care about the most is what you guys think about it. So please let me know in the comments if you tried any of those things before and if you like them. And also tell me if you want me to try them out on laptops where I've heard they do really great. And uh, with that said, if you watched the video this far, maybe drop a like and subscribe for more tests like this. And if you're doing this, also undervolt your stuff. And I have tutorials for that on the channel. See you guys again, maybe. Bye bye.